Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Happy 4th of July to all viewers from the USA. Since today is the US's day of independence, I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn a little about the American flag, its history, evolution, and meaning. Almost everyone in the world probably knows the American flag. The red stripes, blue canton, and white stars are recognizable everywhere since the dawn of the US as an independent country. However, the current flag is the 27th version of the US flag, so let's take a look at all of these changes, what they were, and why they took place. It is said that the first de facto US flag was this one, the Grand Union flag. According to some, this flag preceded the first flag with stars and was created by the Continental Navy during the American War for Independence. They are said to have simply taken the red ensign of the British and added white stripes to distinguish themselves. This flag was very similar, if not completely identical, to the flag of the East India Trading Company, part of the British Empire as well. The similarity might be coincidental, but maybe they just had one of those flags and noticed that the 13 stripes could represent the 13 colonies which were rising up against the British and decided to go with it. This flag was in use until 1777, serving as the basis for the actual American flag designs as an independent nation. On June 14 of 1777, the Second Continental Congress passed the flag resolution, creating the first official US flag, a day that is still celebrated as Flag Day in the United States. 13 stripes alternating between white and red and 13 stars to represent the 13 colonies which rebelled against the British, forming the first states and creating the United States of America. It is said that this flag was merely created to identify American ships at sea, then transitioning into the official standard for the country on land as well. This flag resolution did not specify any particular arrangement, number of points, nor orientation for the stars, and the arrangement of whether the flag had to be 7 white stripes and 6 white ones or vice versa was also not established. The appearance was up to the maker of the flag, giving origin to other variants like the well-known Betsy Ross flag where the stars are in a circle, or even some where the stripes were blue instead of red. In fact, Benjamin Franklin and John Adams, in a letter dated October 3rd of 1778 to Ferdinand I of the Two Sicilies, even described the American flag as consisting of 13 stripes, alternately red, white, and blue. In 1795, the number of stars and stripes was increased from 13 to 15, to reflect the entry of Vermont and Kentucky as states. For a while, however, the additional states weren't added as stars or stripes to the flag, some say to avoid clutter with the constant addition of new states. On April 4th of 1818, a law was passed by Congress, at the suggestion of US Naval Captain Samuel Reed, in which the flag was changed to have 20 stars, with a new star to be added in the future when each new state was admitted, but the number of stripes would be reduced to 13 so as to honor the original colonies. Which made sense because, let's face it, having 50 stripes on the flag wouldn't exactly be very easy. This new flag became official on the 4th of July of 1818. So, throughout time, with the addition of new states to the Union, the number of stars increased. However, prior to the adoption of the 48-star flag in 1912, there was no official arrangement of the stars in the canton. Although the US Army and the US Navy used standardized designs, throughout the 19th century there was an abundance of different star patterns, rectangular, circular, and some even in a star shape. So, with the addition of Arizona to the US in 1912, the disposition of the stars was made official. After that, the most recent changes happened in 1959 with Alaska and 1960 with Hawaii. Recently, with the possibility of Puerto Rico joining the US as an official state, something they have already voted to do, the flag might be changing again, with the addition of one more star, making a new total of 51. During the American Civil War, 
the Confederate States of America, the South, took up an alternate flag. But their first flag was very similar. It was a three-striped red, white and red flag with a blue canton with white stars. The stars began as seven in 1861, changing to nine, 11 and 13 during that same year. But there was such a similarity that during the first battle of Bull Run in the American Civil War, there was a lot of confusion between the flags of the two sides. Especially when it was hanging, it looked almost identical. So in 1863, the battle flag of the Confederate Army was used as the national flag for the Confederation. A red background with a blue salt tire on top of it, along with 13 stars. This Confederate flag was also known as the Stainless Banner. In some cases, it was displayed in the center of a white flag. William Thompson, the editor of a Confederate newspaper, claimed that the flag should be the white man flag, thus justifying the use of the white with his racist belief. In 1865, the flag of the Confederacy changed to the blood-stained banner, a white flag with the stainless banner in its top left corner along with a red vertical stripe on the right. The addition of the red stripe was supposed to distinguish the standard from the white flag of truce. When the flag was hanging limp, the canton wasn't visible, and so all that was visible was the white, creating the possibility for some confusion. The addition of the red stripe and creation of this new flag was proposed by a man named Arthur Rogers, who defended the flag, saying that it had very little Yankee blue and two symbols of the people which he considered as the origin of the people of the Confederacy, the Scottish saltire and the red bar from the French flag. The Union, on the other hand, the Northern States, kept using the Stars and Stripes flags. Being the victors of the Civil War, the Union succeeded in keeping the US whole, having their flag fly over the territory until today, only suffering a few alterations in the number of stars and their disposition. The only place where the Confederate flag remained in use until today is the current state flag of Mississippi, which uses it in its top left corner. The US Civil War and War of Independence are very interesting events in history, so if you want me to do a video on those, leave a comment below. So that is the American flag today, a 13 striped flag, red and white, along with a blue canton on which we can see 50 stars, one for each state. Despite popular belief, desecration of the flag such as burning it or stepping on it is not illegal. Although there have been a lot of attempts to legislate and ban this practice, desecration of the flag remains protected as free speech. Some flags all across the world are very similar to the US flag, like the flag of Bikini Atoll, the flag of Liberia, Malaysia, El Salvador, or even Brittany in France. Inside the US itself, we have dozens of other flags. Being a federation, the US is made up of 50 states, each with its own flag. The majority of them are blue with the state seal, but there are some creative exceptions like the flag of California, New Mexico, Ohio, Alabama, or Hawaii. Ohio is the only non-rectangular shaped flag in the US and one of the few in the world. Hawaii's flag uses the British flag in its canton to represent the friendship of the British to the whole Hawaiian kingdom, coming close to the first Grand Union flag of the US. California's flag, for instance, came into use in 1846, raised by a group of American settlers in revolt against Mexican rule. It imitated the Lone Star flag of Texas and represented a grizzly bear, very common in the area. I'm thinking of making a video explaining the flags of each US state, so let me know if that's something you would be interested in watching. Other than the national flag and the state flags, another main American symbol is the Great Seal of the United States, an American eagle holding in its claws an olive branch and a set of arrows. Above it are the original 13 stars and the motto E Pluribus Unum, meaning out of many, one. Some people say that the eagle faces the arrows when the country is at war and the olive branch when it is at peace, but White House curator Bill Allman explained how this is untrue. Although the seal of the president has undergone various changes over the years, its design is fixed by executive order and is not altered during wartime. 
The branch and the arrows are however said to represent the US's strong desire for peace but constant readiness for war, respectively. The reverse of the seal is this one, a pyramid with the words anuit coeptis, meaning favor our undertakings, and novus ordus seclorum, a new order of the ages, with the number 1776 in Roman numerals, year of the US's independence. The pyramid and the eye are called the eye of providence and are said to represent the eye of God watching over humanity. A lot of people say that the image is also related to Freemasonry, claiming that this represents the influence of Freemasonry in the foundation of the United States. However, Masonic usage of the eye symbol only dates to 14 years after the creation of the Grand Seal. Furthermore, out of all members of all design committees for the Grand Seal, only Benjamin Franklin was a known Mason, and his proposals were not the ones adopted. Both the front and the reverse of the seal are present in the back of the $1 bill. Ever since 1776, the Grand Seal has undergone a few changes and proposals, but always keeping some common elements, like the 13 stars which were present in the first ever proposal, as well as the date of independence in Roman numerals. Some proposals did however present new different ideas for the motto, always in Latin, but this first proposal, said to be the prototype for the Grand Seal, already had the words e pluribus unum. So these are the current flag and seal of the United States of America. Thank you so much for watching, if you have any opinions or corrections leave a comment below and subscribe if you want to catch future videos. I will see you next time.